Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Litchfield County Sports Program here from Thomaston High School. And for you Golden Bear fans, you certainly do recognize the young man to my right. How kind am I this afternoon? And the young ladies to my left, who certainly need no introduction in uh, in this building. First, good afternoon, Mr. Wilson. And the warm, the warm weather and the hot air is back. Huh? Absolutely, <laughs> yes. We got more energy now uh, because we had to shovel this week. I'm not sure I have more energy. I'm a little tired. Uh, that, well, that'll do it. The uh, you know consecutive nights out working. After my four nights at Mohegan Sun with the UConn women, I called you last night and I said well, I have hit the you wall. You finally saw a game under 50. I did. So. I did. We'll talk uh, about that know, a little bit later. I took one of those, but uh, you know, it's been this gym, that gym, every gym going along the way. So uh, you get a little tired, but it's. It's the best time of the year. That's right. Well, why don't you introduce the two young ladies to my left? Because you know them well, and they're good students, too, I hear. Um, and the rumor has it, okay? Um, Gabrielle Herbert on the right, Morgan Sanson in the middle. Um, unless you've been living in a cave and you don't follow basketball. Not the okay, cave. Um, as they said to me okay. down the Waterbury Republican last week, when does Morgan Sanson graduate? We've been typing her name in since about for the last 10 years. <laughs> That's what happens when you start when you're freshman. But two... Uh, Cousins and, and prime ingredients for what has been uh, a five-year run with no end in sight for the Thomas and High girls basketball team. You know, Morgan, we'll start with you, and we're going to go to Mohegan Sun where we were the last two years. Just what does it feel like when you walk off the bus, you come up through that tunnel, and you go onto that court? What's it like? Um, it's just a like, great feeling just um, being there and just all the hard work you put into it. Um, and when you walk into the gym, or the arena, um, it's just amazing to have that feeling. That Which is something to say arena too, as yeah, opposed to arena. walking into a gym, yes. you're walking into, wow, you're looking at the, <laughs> the banners on the wall. Now last year, obviously, a great ending. Um, you know, the year before, all the bugaboos came out because it was your return trip, you know, last year. And yeah. think about this, you've got, you know, one more step to get back there. How surreal is it? Um, it's unreal, actually. Um, it's amazing to be, have the chance to even come close to doing that again. But Friday will be a big game, and we're excited for it. Gabby, you got Immaculate, who last year in the quarterfinals you beat here at the Cave in, in Thomaston. A um, couple of returning players, from what I see, you know, from Immaculate, so you're going to be a little familiar with each other, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what do you think the key is to Friday night for you girls? I think we have to keep playing how we were. Our defense was great the other night, and we have to keep working hard, and our offense just has to get a little better, and I think. Saturday afternoon when Rick and I were up at Mohegan Sun watching the Yukon women win by 50-something. We were sta we were sitting on the sidelines about 12 feet away from where your sister sunk those three free throws last year. And we were both astounded because we saw a couple times this year Daniel Hamilton, the outstanding freshman for the Yukon men, had a chance to win a game with three. It's not like he got two and he missed one. When you talk to your, your sister... How hard is that, or how did, was she just, she just ice in her veins where it was like, I got this? Uh, yeah, she like, I don't know how to explain. She, she doesn't just, like to lose. Yeah, she won't handle that. So, <laughs> so she's tired. Of, you know, she's kind of, yeah. That is good stuff, Maybe. right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Abby was at the game the other night, and uh, one of the officials was one of the ones that did the final. Okay. And uh, Ashley went over and said hello to her and remembered and um, things like that. So people don't forget there have still been more tweets. The Hamilton foul shots the other night, uh, somebody from New Haven Register tweeted, uh, nobody, no way he makes three, and somebody else tweeted, no Abby Herbert, huh? Right, so, right. Uh, it kind of follows. And just to get back to the, um, the Mohegan Sun, just to show you what it means, and these guys have experienced twice, maybe a third time, and I, I don't want to, push this, but they're all back next year, so we'll right. let next year take care. But Frank Lombardo, whose uh, Holy Cross team was eliminated last night uh, by Enfield in, in a pretty good game, um, said to me, and, and this is a coach in a program that has won a ton of titles and a ton of, I just want to get to Mohegan. I've never been there. And I had to, because I covered their last state yeah. championship, but it was the last one at Central Connecticut. Okay. So that experience... It's just something so many people want. Enfield last night, Coach tells me after game, they've never been to a semifinal. Mm. Now, I don't know if they can get by St. Joe's, um, who these, these guys saw down in the tournament. They didn't play, <coughs> they saw them play. I suspect maybe not, but I don't know. But they've never been to a semifinal. So that lure of where they call home these days of Mohegan Sun um, really is special to everybody. That, you mentioned it, Holy Cross not getting that. That just boggles my mind. Because we forget they only went to Mohegan Sun 
X amount of years ago, right? Where before that it was at Central or a different arena. It's been, I guess it's been 10 years now, and I would think because they've won a couple of championships down there, but I had not realized he hadn't been to Mohegan Sun. Right. And here's a guy that's won, you know, 8 billion games. They're 18 and 2 every year. And these girls and, have a pass. It's like, yeah, whatever, we're just going Almost to like it, you know, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, this has been a five years that they'll be talking about, and, and it's going to go on. They'll be talking about, well, after these guys are gone, which is, I don't even want to think about it at this point. But, you know, <laughs> well, at, on senior night, I'm sure one of the coaches out there did say, you know, good luck to you, right? Because they won't have to see everybody in a couple of years from now, right? I mean, that's where you always have those coaches that are like, nice to play against you, don't want to play against you anymore. <laughs> um, you know, what is it about, you know, your, your head coach, you know, Bobby McMahon and the staff um, that, that kind of keeps your girls on point? You really didn't have that, that bump game. Um, I think all the coaches, they just really want to push us all the time. They don't, we don't settle for just being good enough. We want, always want to make ourselves better in some way, and there's always some way to make ourselves better, and they just help us find that and push us to be our best. Nicole Schaefer and um, Julia Quinn giving you kind of a boost the last couple of games with the, you know, with the three, the three-point shot. How key has that been? It's been huge for us. They can bring, like, just hitting one shot, and then after another, after they start hitting one, they can hit another. It really helps us, gives us momentum. Yeah, an elite. Like, okay. Immaculate, probably coming in with a bit of a chip on their shoulder, mm -hmm. right? You know, have being bounced, you know, off last year, a big program from, mm -hmm. you know, from Danbury, who have been used to in the past winning championships in, in different sports. Um, are you just looking to go play your game, or are you? Is that how you girls approach it, or is it we have to play a certain way against these guys, or just play our game? The coaches do a good job preparing us for each opponent, opponent but um, in the end we just play our Thompson basketball and um, push or make it like a oh, yeah. last. You know, one key question that I think you girls probably have to go to practice is at the annual Wilson softball game. Is he good? Does he do well? No, he's still Because it's a big thing here in Thomason. I got to get to it this year. I used to it last year. Stuff, but I, I, yeah. I, Jonathan I, the Rockstar <laughs> usually you know, probably dominates at this point. So I, I got to stop calling him Rockstar at some point because I've known him since he was <laughs> sick. He's probably embarrassed by now, but sorry, Rockstar. Um, it'll just be like that. Talk one more thing about the cave for me. What's it like, this, this group? It's, a, it's an amazing group. Um, the cave just always is supportive of us, and they... No matter what the score is, they are, they're always cheering for us, and they're just very supportive, and it helps us. Okay. You have, you know, you'll have a mixed crowd at Wilby mm -hmm. on, you know, Friday night. Mm -hmm. And do you hear the crowd a lot either way, or do you kind of box it out a little? I, like, don't really hear it that much. Like, I can hear the cave, like, saying, like, saying things, but I don't really, like, like, I can't tune them. You see, they have to, to change the subject, but I... <laughs> Everybody was talking about St. Paul's, right? Mm -hmm. It was last year, they're ranked number two. There's all these connections that everybody's... Is there any kind of reaction to the fact, does it figure into this game Friday night that it's not St. Paul's? Is it disappointing to you guys? Is that going to be hard to say this is immaculate? Um, I would be surprised watching you play if it did, but, but I know everybody was expecting St. Paul's and all the connections. And I know, well, neither one of you did, but a lot of guys on the team went over and watched them play. and. Uh, What's your thoughts about them not being the opponent? Um, they were a great team, so it was a little bit of a surprise, but it's um, March and it's tournament time, so any given day, any team can come from behind or be the underdog and win it any day. Yeah, it's a great point because I think, you know, the St. Paul team, even though they were ranked number two, you would seen them against Torrington, we saw them against Holy Cross where they struggled, but still, you come in with that record, you have a lot of the returning players that were at Mohegan Sun, you know, uh, last year. Uh, t that Down the stretch of that game, um, and you never get into practice, don't worry about it. Well, you got a teacher's no, excuse. Bobby, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get pictures after, don't worry. Uh, yeah. You know, when you're down the stretch of that game, when you get to overtime and, and the rest of that, I mean, how did you keep yourself from getting too hyped or too? Was it an out of body experience by that point? Um, I think at that point, we just were so focused, and they, there was excitement there, but um, we just we're set on winning and we're not going to take a loss at that point. We just all work together and every, everyone on that bench and like the stands, just everyone just wanted you to win. You just got that vibe and just didn't want to lose. How about for you again? Well, yeah, everyone, no one was giving up at this point. Every loose ball, we're going after it. No matter, like, no matter what it took, we wanted to get that one. How do you balance what you're doing right now? 
versus going out there and just playing. Because a lot of things written about you, there's now a lot of things videotaped on you. Is it? Do you try not to get caught up in it? Would coach do a good job with that? Yeah, just try not to think about any of the outside stuff. Just focus on your job and how you're gonna make our team better to win. Absolutely. I'm gonna tell you when they get a chance to sit down, they gotta have the biggest scrapbooks in the area because there's a lot of that stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There's definitely four there's years definitely now. a lot of stuff. So, well, ladies, we want to uh, thank you, uh, thank you for, for, for coming us. down. Uh, yeah, we and Friday night. night. Good luck on Friday night. night. But then. <laughs> Get to play softball soon, right? Yeah, Everything's yeah. melting out there. Yeah. I hear it. So I mean, the back you know, defending champions also in yeah. softball. I mean, it could be a fun year at the same yeah, time, yeah. right? Yeah, hey, we thank you for thank coming you, down. We'll you. see you in practice. Have thank fun you. in practice. Thank you. Come on over, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, I'm gonna move over to the middle here and uh, or over here. Go in the middle. We'll go yeah, in the yeah, middle there. So Mr. Gaffney and I look like it. we're fighting or something. <laughs> no, so it's just um, it's remarkable stuff with these kids have been able to accomplish. Well, you know, I think it's special to do anything once, particularly in a small school. And, you know, you read a lot about Thomas and maybe some people out there that aren't fans or whatever have read more than they wanted to read. But they're writing this story. We're just chronicling it. But you think about doing something special once and you think about where these people are now. Four straight Berkshire League titles, four yeah. straight tournament titles, a state championship, two appearances in the finals, right. at least one in the semis this year. We don't know what Friday's going to look like. Yep. They, there is a unique quality to this team, and Morgan Sanson touched on it a little bit with Abby Herbert and some others. They just don't like to lose. And this group, again, has another year. So, I mean, I just think it's it, they've not been one-hit wonders. This is now a program, right. um, and it's a, um, you know, they are, and not that they don't have close games, but they are the beast of the Berkshire League right now. Yep. And, um, this is going on five or six years running now. What do you, you call know? it a dynasty? It, I, I think you can use the word. I think in baseball they do it if you win three. So they're, they're certainly a Berkshire League dynasty. And if you listen to... Um, the coach of uh, Doug No, the coach of Windsor Locks, who Bobby McMahon knows well, and his first quote talked about Thomas in tradition. Not one hit wonder or they're good this year. Right. It's a Bobby McMahon team and it's tradition. So what these kids have built, these kids have been here three years, but going back to when this started, really in 2009-10 with Sierra Brandt and right. Brittany Brandt right. and Morgan right. Doyle and Stephanie Keith. And I know I'm going to forget somebody, but that whole crew that went undefeated and yep. lost a, a bitter loss for them to Portland in the second round of the state tournament. It started there, and it's never wavered. Right. Came back with uh, Maggie Everhart after that. Maggie so came back, and these kids, you know, we joke about Morgan and typing her name into the paper. But, right. It's been a while. But part of it, also <laughs> understanding, again, it, these are more than one sport athletes. This is a school of under 270 kids. Right. And the often quote that all live within four miles of the school, and so they go from those kids that just got up and walked out of here have won a Berkshire League softball title. They turned around and won a Berkshire League uh, state class S state title yep. last year in absolutely unbelievable fashion. Comebacks in, in every every game. Talk about not wanting to lose. Morgan Sanson two outs in the seventh, down one, two strikes. Jack's a home run over the center field center fence. Field. I mean, my goodness. Morgan Sanson, yeah, Morgan Sanson gets burnt for six runs in the first couple innings of this state final in West Haven and doesn't give up a hit after the second inning. Right. And, and they rate. Uh, these kids are just, I mean, you can talk about them a lot. Uh, they get what they deserve, and they're right. winners. And, you know, I, I will make a point in, in defense of anyone that might think that you happen to be a homer, which you are so far from, it's not even funny. We, we contribute and we uh, celebrate the excellence of these kids. They've done the work. Um, They've proven it. It's not that because you're from Thomaston and I'm from Torrington that we root for these kids. You know, that's, We've watched it. It's not a subject I even address. It hasn't it hasn't come up. Um, Thomaston gets... I mean to go sensitive on you. Well, you Thomaston... Know, but, uh, it's, it's not, not just because we love Thomaston. It's not something. It's not, because they're good. Thomaston gets covered <laughs> because Thomaston wins. Thomaston gets nice things right about him because they win. It right. has really nothing. If it's not me, it's going to be somebody else. One in 19, Rick. We're not having an injury. So, you know, I'm going 
gone, I've gone years without watching the Thomas and basketball team because they've struggled. So it, it really has nothing to do with that. Right. So I was just telling all the folk out there that might be thinking. They don't it bring it up, and I don't. I don't mention it. I think there's <laughs> enough credibility there after oh, there 30 years. You got, so. the, you got the you got the records to prove it. So, well, you know, we got that uh, coming up on uh, Friday night. Tomorrow night, uh, Patrick Tisha and I will be heading up to the XL Center for hopefully not the one and done with the uh, UConn men as they start to play in the American Athletic conference tournament where most folks just figure that uh, they're going to have to run the table. They're going to have to win four games in four nights, and we just came back from watching the women win three games in three nights, and that's not easy either. They don't play three basketballs in three right. nights. Now, the UConn women probably practice harder in some cases if they do it three days in a row than they might in practice, so the other day, I think to some extent, Mariah Jefferson was telling us that you know games are actually a bit of a relief as opposed to how tough their practice Well, I think are. you can only listen to Gino so much, at least you know, <laughs> a little bit off. Take it out on the, the other games. kids. <laughs> you know, UConn gave us no reason to believe they are going to run the table this year. It's been kind of a down year, disappointing in, in respects. Um, but, you know, at least we'll take a, a time now to, uh, you know, salute Ryan Boltwright. He's had a pretty darn good right. career. He has, he's done what he could this year. Yep. He, he's turned out to be a pretty quality player. So, um, you know, a lot to be proud of there. And, and, you know, you build for the future. They've won three national titles in, what, 13, 14 years, more than any other. And, you know, it hasn't been there this year, particularly at the offensive end at times. But, you know, Kevin Alley will, will work to, to get it done next year. Sure he will. And on the, the women's side, I mean, you and I were talking about it yesterday that on – you know, uh, Monday night, uh, UC, UCF, University of South Florida, was the only team that we saw this year that didn't come out half-beaten when they got on the court. I mean, they were down 20 in the first half, which you expect. There was two set, there was two four-period, four-minute segments in which they kind of lost it. But, you know, from there, you and I were talking yesterday, that they got outscored by nine points in the second half. That's how it's become with UConn. They got outscored in a half. It's disgusting. You know what I mean? But, you know, they managed to get it done. But I think it's a good time to get pushed. Because you're going to get pushed in the, in the tournament. Well, I, I don't think by any means that there's not. I, I think we probably would all, or pretty close to all of us, agree that if UConn's on top of its game, they're going to win the national title. Right. I, I mean, I, I just don't see anybody beating them. But there are teams on a given night out there maybe capable of beating them. Stanford did it, and I know that was months ago now. Um, I still think you got to respect South Carolina, even though you kind of handled them up here by right. 20. Yeah. I mean, there's teams out there certainly very capable, South Florida, which played them tough. So, um, But I, I think if you're the rest, I, I, a couple of things struck me this weekend. Um, if you're the rest of the country, number one, one point I heard on TV, and it's been made before, it's not UConn's job to get worse. It's everybody else's job to try to at least raise itself to get on more of a competitive level yep. with UConn. That's the job of the rest of the country, not UConn. So don't blame them because they're as good as they are. Right. So I think that was it. But I also think for those teams, you know, we've seen plenty of games that's, you know, 50 to 8 at halftime or 32 to 4. I think you got to take the attitude that, you would if you were playing capital prep in Connecticut. Have some fun with the game. Yep. Don't beat yourself up. Try to win, but have some fun. Um, you know you're playing, you know, the, the monster, the beast, and but have some fun with it. Right. I know the, uh, the East Carolina uh, University coach on uh, Sunday said just that, that it's up to them to get better. It's right. up to the league to, I mean, these are all Division One kids. They're all scholarship kids. Yep. Yeah, I mean, so you were probably the leading scorer and the best player on your team wherever you came from. It's not UConn's job to get worse. It's their job, like you right. said, to, to kind of catch up. But uh, they get 12 days off, which uh, Gino was not very happy about. You know, I mean, it's just I don't think at this time, time of year, yeah, I mean, and that's too much. You get out of rhythm and everything else. Right. Now, it's UConn, so he'll get a couple of what will probably be easier first-round games, right. and he'll get back into it. But... I don't blame them. I mean, that, that just kind of just disrupts the flow. Early, uh, the two early games will be uh, two weekends from now. Selection Monday is the 16th after the men are selected on uh, Sunday the 15th. That Saturday and Monday, there will be games up at Gamble, the first round games. They'll host two games a day, both Saturday and Monday. And then they move on to Albany from there. And then after Albany, it is... Uh, April, where we go down the 5th and the 7th down to uh, to Florida, and we want to thank the fine folks from uh, The List is Growing. Uh, David Zeller, the fine folks at uh, The Listfield Saltwater Grill, our friend uh, Andy Stowers, and some great food up there in Lister. We've had a couple yep. of our yep. our uh, you know shows so far. Ed Arum, a great friend of ours from the 
the track club. Uh, an anonymous donor from Wide World of Sports in Florida who wants to oh, remain there. You know, Ruin all the yeah, yeah. money. God bless him. <laughs> and uh, Jimmy Pescator in, uh, in Torrington, uh, Thank you. who I always see him at the Final Four. Like last year, after the women won, right. after he was in the background at the ESPN shots. So this guy travels there. We'll right. see him in both Albany um, and down in the and down in Florida. But I know it's 50 degrees today. I'll still take Florida on April 2nd, and you'll be down on April 4th. We'll be okay with that. I don't blame you. You know, I was just thinking about that layoff thing you were talking about, which I know Gino isn't happy. But, you know, we've kind of done the same thing with high school basketball girls in Connecticut um, in their effort to play the uh, finals the same weekend as the boys and get them all into Mohegan on the same weekend. Whoever wins, like, these semifinal games, which is part of a doubleheader Friday night. Right. Back, um, you know, Thomas been playing Immaculate in the second game and Canton and um, Notre Dame. Dame in the yeah. first game. Yep. But they have to wait, not 12 days, but they've got to wait eight days till they play. That's a long time. And uh, I think the boys finish on Wednesday for yeah. for Saturday. Now, we, now, you and I both like Saturday, Sunday versus right. that Friday. Saturday, <clears throat> Sunday used to have the Mohegan mm -hmm. Sun because that was tough. We hope Thomas and if they get there, does not get the 10 a.m. game. We're just saying. That early morning game is tough. Well, they were perfect game. last year. I mean, it was that 2 o'clock, middle of the yeah, afternoon yeah. game, which gives you time to get down there. You don't have to rush around. Also, you know, certainly if you win, it gives you time to for them to celebrate and right. um, gives us time to write. And But, uh, you know, this is the time that, uh, you know, you, you, you're a little nervous and you don't know. I, I expect. Not to get back off you, kind. I expect Immaculate's a great program, and I expect Immaculate's going to give them a, a, a really good tussle. And I thought Gabrielle hit the uh, nail on the head after watching them beat Windsor Locks. We got to continue to play good defense, but we got to get a little better on offense because they were not good offensively the other night. Okay, they were bailed by the threes. Much you said. The Nicole night, right? Schaefer has the last three games been huge for them because she has taken so much pressure off basically what's been their two scorers, who are Casey Carangelo and Morgan Sanson. Yep. And uh, Nicole was hitting some shots outside again, so good for her. But Julia Quinn, now this is a kid that missed her freshman year because of a serious knee injury. Mm. Uh, they were talking about her coming out of middle school. Yep. All right. Julia Quinn can play, but you have to remember, she's just at the end of basically playing time her senior year. Right. So, but you see flashes. She shoots jump shots from three-point range. She's quick. She gives them some instant offense off the air, is capable of that. So we'll see what happens um, Friday night. Um, you know, we're talking about shooters. Um, you know, we'll go back a little bit to, uh, did what happened to Holy Cross last night surprise you? Um, With, uh, not, not really for the simple, in, in the respect that I knew Enfield was pretty good. Um, you know, I'm looking at their scores and looking at the teams that they played. And see, here's an interesting comparison. Enfield beat Windsor Locks by three in overtime. Wow. Windsor Locks lost to Thomaston by 14. Now, I'm not, I'm just, just kind of curious. Yeah, yeah. Um, I knew they were very tough. They beat Lewis Mills in the quarters. They're big, right? Um, big they kids. have a six foot three freshman. They're loaded with freshmen. They're going to be I very good. Know. I think what probably surprised me a little bit is Enfield took control of the game in the last four minutes. You're on the road, a hostile environment. And you're playing with a host of freshmen. Right. They outscored Holy Cross seven to nothing in the final three minutes. Mm. Holy Cross was pretty much by that time reduced to one offensive weapon, Rashana Siders. We've seen Rashana light it up. Right. She had all of their seven points, but she was she couldn't get to the hoop because there was too much size in there. She was taking some long, long threes, and it just wasn't enough. So I think the element that they were beating their own gym yep. when they had tied it at 38 surprised me a little bit, but. You know, I, I think Enfield probably loses to St. Joe's, but it was, you know, and, and Frank Lombardo's a friend of ours and a good guy, and I know he was he was disappointed, but uh, he's got pretty much everybody coming he's back next year. So. feel too bad yeah. for him. And actually, when we go back to, uh, you know, last week when, when Torrington got knocked off by Kennedy, uh, Kennedy did say thank you to Torrington because... It maybe didn't because what happened to them two nights ago, right? They, what, they lose by 28? Well, you and I, <laughs> you, you and I had, had talked, and we knew that... Um, Torrington probably would if we were expecting Bristol Eastern, but either Northwest Catholic, we knew Torrington would probably have trouble in the tough. second yeah, round. But, yeah. um, you know, the boys are off and running, and, yep. and we've, we've done an awful lot of girls talk in the last couple of weeks, and um, Crosby has a, a, a nice opening win and plays Norwalk tonight. Talked to Nick Ojeli last night, mm -hmm. and um, he said that we're in for a tough game. Um, they play exactly like we do, which is run up and down. Okay. So, uh, saw Holy Cross last night, as long as we're on the NVL. I hadn't seen my friend Eddie Generale in a long time, and uh, 
I didn't want to tell them I was there to cover the girls game. I just walked in. <laughs> and said, I, but uh, they look they they outmanned a summer's team that was missing their best player. But uh, he gets to move on. Okay. Uh, Terryville gets to move on. Shea Tracy with twenty seven last night. Blissfield, Northwestern. Danny Bill. Gazinski. Uh, um, you know, he, Blissfield. He, he takes care of safety high school. Yes, he did. He did. Well. well those kids never well, trip. Um, he gets, they never fall. He, he's got a tough one coming up. I, I know that. Um, but uh, good for him. He's got a first round game. Um, Nanawag lost a hard one. Um, Nagatuck down there. Um, at the buzzer so against the Warren wow. Harding, 60 to 59. So the, the, boys are, the boys are off and running. Chapog is out. They got beat by East Hampton. Sacred Heart had a hard time with uh, Putnam, uh, um, ninety six to fifty four. You know, there's now, so many different on. views on on Sacred Heart. Uh, Joe yeah. Palladino, our, you know, my good friend, colleague, your good friend, wrote a column about Sacred Heart belongs in S. They're in S. That's where he should be. Right. Um, there's other people. Uh, I had not realized, and I'll, I'll take Joe at his word that if they moved up, they would have had to move to Double L. I thought you would re could request to move up. Well, just maybe one or well two. that was my point. That move up to M, try yourself out. Right. Um, you know, I struggle to believe that they belong in S, but mm. it is what it is. We can sit here and argue about it. So, yep. but they're they're a lot of fun to watch. Well, say, uh, second round action uh, starts on also starts on Friday night, and we'll have like I said, Terryville will be home hosting North Brantford. Holy Cross will be home ho uh, hosting Haddam Killingly. Uh, Litchfield will be on the road at number four Bloomfield, uh, so uh, just nice to see we still got still got some folks. We got some teams, and to Dan Gazinski and Litchfield, good luck. That was the team that obliterated Terryville with, <laughs> when Trillo and Jacob Johnson and Shea Tracy were there last year. And yeah. uh, you know, there's obviously they beat. I think they ousted Northwestern two or three years ago when they had their really good team. I mean, they, they just bring a lot of athleticism to the floor and everything else. It's and it's been very tough for Berkshire League teams to play them. But if you look uh, here at the Class S girls basketball CIAC tournament bracket, there's only four left. And one of the four is right here from the Berkshire League in Thomaston Golden Bears. Well, and they are the last area team standing. Um, they are. Yep. I'm not sure that's so much of a surprise. Um, but you never knew. Um, I kind of thought that maybe Holy Cross would get by last night. You know, we just reviewed that game a little bit. Right, right. But, uh, I, you know, Mills ends up going up to play him, and Mills gets beat by a good Enfield team. Um, Kennedy, we knew after beating Torrington, was probably going to run out of gas there against Northwest Catholic as right. far as the NVL girls. We haven't, you know, we mentioned a little bit in the beginning of the show when we had Morgan and Gabrielle on, we talked about St. Paul's. I'm sure there's great disappointment over there. And, and they had a, at least a, I wasn't at the game, I was down on Holy Cross, but uh, they had a six to ten point lead. Yeah, in the four point quarter. lead with seven minutes left. Yeah, so, first. you know, yep. what happened over there, I'm not sure. That's a veteran team, a team that's won a lot of games. And, and, and you know, obviously the great game with Thomaston last year. I would think that, that, and they lose a number of kids. They got a couple back, including, I believe, Lizzie Ferraro and Lizzie Curtella, if I got those names right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I, I think there, there's probably um, a lot of disappointment over in Falconland. Probably I think, is. You know. Hey, a quick mention out to our good friend Kevin Roberts, who has uh, gotten himself a new job. He's now with the Record Journal. I and, did not uh, know that. Just found that out this morning. So good luck to K Rod, one of our. Uh, Great friends from the Register Citizen back in the day, and his brother George is the one that does a great job taking care of the back end of mm -hmm. our site. So it's always good to see Mr. Roberts out and about. He was not at the uh, St. Paul game last night, but he had done a preview on it and the rest of it. So, you know, good luck to Kevin as he, you know, continues his career out there. So about to wrap it up here from uh, from Thomaston High School. There is so much stuff, you know, going on. We, we think we're ramping down, and normally after the 22nd, as I was talking to our friend Joe Palladino today, he said, I'll be fine after the 22nd. Well, you and I won't be, because the ride just continues to be, you know, more fun. It well, I, I, I think the thing, it's almost a bittersweet thing because you love being out. It, it's the emotional time of the year. It's you see some great basketball. You see the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. We watch basketball for four months. It's a great time of year. But also, you start getting bleary eyed when you're in <laughs> when you're in the gyms every night. And you know we've been in the gyms every night. Last night I could not find the buffet in the Gaffing House. You know that we had in Mohegan Sun for four days. I, I did. I it just wasn't there. It ended up to be calling to Chinese you know food because you know you get a little bit spoiled up there because there's no box lunches this time of the year Mr. Wilson we are now in NCAA territory so we will have some fun down in Florida but we'll be back uh, 
this uh, next Wednesday with some uh, more action here on the Well, we'll know a little bit. Uh, you, know, and, you, you know, we'll know if we've got a team in the finals, at least in the girls, or we or we're, we have some disappointment, and uh, we'll see where the boys are sitting. I want to thank uh, the girls for coming on in today. Uh, Gabby Herbert and Morgan Sanson. Rich behind the camera today doing a fine Rich job. Rich Revere, our man Rich behind Revere. the glass. This is uh, Tim Gaffney saying good day, everybody. And, and aloha from week. me. See you at the court.